Wow, that is such a difficult question to answer. There are going to be philosophy books you guys might never have heard of and probably would never read, okay? And if you read them, I don't think you'd be interested in them. So it's a bit hard for me, okay? But one book that really um, hit, hit the, you know, really uh, amazed me, let's say, is a book by Ibn Tufayl. And it's the first philosophical book ever written, first storybook, first philosophical storybook ever written in history. Okay, it's about a 500-year-old book. It's called Hey Bin Yaksan. Now, I don't think any of you <laughs> have ever read this book, but it's a phenomenal book. If you ever come across it, buy it. Okay, so it's, a, it's about a young man that finds himself um, on an island. And uh, he goes through various phases throughout the book. He's raised by a doe, you know, like a female deer. And he's kind of like Tarzan. This was the inspiration. This story was the inspiration for Tarzan. So the book Tarzan comes from the book Hay Ibn Yaksan. Believe it or not. Okay, it's a 500-year-old book. It's the first philosophical story ever written in history. It's a brilliant book. It's written by a man named Ibn Tufail. Phenomenal book. So these are the kind of books that I, I would put in my top five. And I think they're very, very uh, much unknown. Books that are also excellent that would be known more in the West would be like, for instance, uh, Euthyphro. Euthyphro was a great book written by Plato, but Euthyphro is like a good introduction to Plato. That's why I recommend it to people. But you know, among the greatest books ever written, I would say it's Gorgias from Plato, uh, um, Phaedo, the book of Phaedo. But again, these are books that I think most people, if they read them, they would like, what is this? You know, like people would be like, what is this? What are these people talking about? This makes no sense. And um, I understand that that would be people's uh, reaction to it because it's really like, it's very, very different than anything you've ever read or seen. It is very, very, um, I don't know how to say, it. it's very deep stuff. It's very complicated stuff. If you don't have a background, if you haven't read his uh, prior works, if you haven't read Plato's prior works, Phaedo is among the last books of, of Plato. Phaedo, the book Phaedo, is one of Plato's last works. Okay, he's written 40 books. Let's say 37 of them scholars are sure he wrote. Let's call it 37. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to... I'm not going to say that he wrote 40 because some, some books are debatable with who wrote it. Um, however, um, Phaedo is like the culmination. So if you haven't read the prior works, it's kind of hard to follow. However, these are my favorite books. They're very difficult to, uh, to read. Also, of course, Ghazali's works, the Confession, Confessions of Ghazali, uh, René Descartes, uh, Leibniz, um, uh, George Berkeley. I mean, these are the books that are, intrigue me. David Hume. I read a lot of David Hume's material. Uh, Immanuel Kant. Uh, but these are things that most people, if they read them, like for instance, Immanuel Kant, nobody reads Immanuel Kant. You'll never have met anybody who read Immanuel Kant unless they are in philosophy. Immanuel Kant didn't write for the everyday man. He doesn't, the way Immanuel ri Kant writes is so complicated. It's so complicated that if you don't have a philosophy background, if you don't have a professor explaining to you, what the hell is this man talking about? Uh, I don't think many people would ever understand what, what he is talking about. It's complicated stuff. It's complicated stuff. Now, for those of you who are interested in philosophy and all that, I would recommend René Descartes. René Descartes' Meditation on First Philosophy. It's a really nice... Uh, journey through epistemology you know how do we know things uh, how are we certain of things and um it's in it's interesting stuff but my favorite book that's why people always ask me for book list guys the book i read the books i read are um they're a bit complex you know they're a bit complex to understand in my opinion most people will not get much out of it like for instance one of my favorite authors is uh, ibn arabi if you try to read ibn arabi i don't think i think you read the whole book and be like i don't understand a word i don't understand a word of what this man wrote um, however, the reason why most people won't understand that is because, because he is talking um, from a particular point of view. And that particular point of view, um, it's, uh, it's complicated to get to that point of view. But if you do get to that point of view, it is quite enlightening. It is uh, incredibly enlightening. I know my audience is like 99% male. So that's why I'm, I'm talking mostly to, to men here. I'm addressing mostly men. Now, if you're a woman, I'm giving you the same advice. Just flip around uh, the sexes, okay? Listen, don't get married unless you have the perfect girl. Okay, that's my advice to you. If the girl is not great, especially in today's women, today's women, today's men, okay? Look, there's not, you know, couples today, they're getting married less, okay? So, sorry, they're getting married less and they're getting divorced more. If we're talking about the West, I live in the West, okay? So, the Americas, European um, relationships, and especially the Americas, it's not going well, you know, like statistically speaking, people are getting married less and getting divorced more. So in my opinion, 
if you're in a place, a time, in a culture where there's bodies dropping everywhere, don't be the next guy in line. Okay, something's not working out. There's something in the culture. There's something in the social conditioning. There is something, you know, whatever it may be. Uh, marriages are not lasting and uh, a lot of times the guy or whoever's making the more money gets uh, the short end of the stick so in my opinion in my opinion if, if you find a humble wife marry her she's humble she's you know old school she's kind of like mom depends what your mom was like but uh, let's say she's like an old school mom uh, yeah marry her uh, if she's not in my opinion uh, don't get married in my opinion Wait till you find a good, humble, wholesome young lady because um, that's what's going to make a marriage work, in my opinion. Now, you're asking me my opinion. That's my opinion. I know a lot of you are going to disagree. Um, <laughs> in my opinion, if she's not a wholesome, humble a wife, why would I marry her? What's the point of marrying her? What is the point of marrying her? So for me, marriage, you know, it's to have kids. I want my kids to know that they're in a loving family. You know, they grew up. It's, it's, it's a different level. You know, when you're married and the kids grow up and they feel like the parents are there for the family and there, there's that love and there's that togetherness, the kids grow up with a different, um, they feel special, they feel loved, they grow up with a different type of upbringing. Whereas today, you know, you grow up, you're in divorce and you're like, you know what, family doesn't exist, you know, like everybody goes their own way, everybody's very selfish. Um, usually, usually, I shouldn't say that, it's not for everybody, okay, so it doesn't mean because you are born in a family where it's you know there was a divorce that you're not going to feel loved no you absolutely can't feel loved all i'm saying is that there's something very special when people are two, two people come together to raise a family it's something i think very special it's something i'm experiencing at the moment and i think it's one of the greatest experiences in life personally personally i think it's one of the greatest experiences in life however a lot of this generation is missing out on it a lot of this generation is missing out on that and I think it has a lot to do with social media, maybe whatever your theory may be. Maybe it has to do with feminism, third wave feminism. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. I'm not a sociologist. All I'm saying is it's a phenomenal experience and a lot of people are missing out on it.